All right. So we've heard about these variable selection methods in the abstract, and now we're going to try them out in R. Uh, we're going to use the same packages that we uh, typically use, and we're going to use this data set first year GPA. This is the same one that the book uses to illustrate uh, these procedures, but the book is using Minitab, so we're going to work through how to do it in R. I think that the results should be the same, um, although sometimes different software produces different results. So uh, remember, there's no single best multiple regression model. The analyst needs to be part of the process, um, and every model has its own strengths and weaknesses. Um, we're going to talk through all the different methods for variable selection that are automated, and we're going to talk about some of these different criterion uh, for determining which model is better than the other one or best. So we could have adjusted R squared, we could have RSS, Mallow's CP, AIC, or BIC. Um, the book really likes Mallow's CP, but statisticians usually use AIC. It's the same up to a constant um, as uh, Mallow's CP, but it's more general and it's better um, in R. So uh, there's a homework problem that asks you, uh, I've written in like use AIC rather than Mallow's CP to make the comparison. So we're gonna start with um, best subset selection as our first method. Remember, this is the one that is the most computationally expensive because it tries all the possible um, combinations of variables. So uh, all of these methods um, are going to be implemented in this package called Leaps. I'm pretty sure that I had you install it at the beginning of the semester, but if not, you might need to run install.packages down in your console. Um, you can try running library Leaps, you know, control enter and just see if it loads. Mine loads up. Um, and so there's this function called reg subsets, which is going to have a number of different methods. And the methods are the things that are going to change based on the uh, variable selection method we want to use. So the best subsets, uh, that is called the exhaustive method. Um, and we could question mark reg subsets to learn more about this. So let's see, let's scroll down. Um, the method uh, could be exhaustive, forward selection, backward selection, or sequential replacement. And uh, I guess they are uh, written right in here. Let's see. So exhaustive, backward, forward, or seek rep. Um, so I'm going to do reg subsets, GPA tilde dot. So we're going to try and predict the GPA from the first year GPA data set, and we're going to use all the other variables. So um, we're going to use the high school GPA, verbal SAT, math SAT, whether or not the person is male, um, whether, let's remember about some of these first year GPA, uh, oh, number of credits they took in humanities courses, number of social studies courses, whether they're first gen, whether they are white, and whether they attended a high school where 50% or more of students intended to go to college. So we're going to use all of the other ones as predictors. Um, and I'm going to show you two best models of every size, and I'm going to do the exhaustive method. So if I control enter on this line, nothing happens, but now I have an object called best in my environment. And the way to really see the result of best um, is to use this kind of complicated uh, line of code. So we're going to do with summary best. Uh, so we could just run summary best. Um, but it's going to be not um, everything that we want. Uh, we're going to say, so with summary best, we're going to get a data dot frame of the R squared, the adjusted R squared, the CP, the RSS, and then the output matrix. So if I control enter, let's make this a little wider. Probably don't need that. So control enter. All right. So now I get um, the R squared for every model, the adjusted R squared, the CP, the RSS, and then I get what variables were in the model. So what this is showing me is the two best models of size one. Uh, here's the first one and here's the second one. That's what's in the parentheses. And um, so one of the models has high school GPA as the single predictor and the other one has the humanities credits. And it looks like if we were picking based on R squared, we would pick this first one because the R squared is 0.199 versus 0 
Um, we also could look at, uh, you know, adjusted R squared, we want the higher one of those. CP, we want the smaller one of those. RSS, we want the smaller one of those. These things are not always going to agree, though, so sometimes they're different. And then we've got the best models of size 2, the best models of size 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, so it goes up to uh, models of size 8. So you might be able to see that the R squared values are just going up every time the model gets bigger. So the R squareds for models of size 7 are 0.349 and 0.347, and then the models of size 8, 0 0.3495, 0 0.3494. So R squared always goes up as you add more variables. That's why we might want to use adjusted R squared. So if we were picking based on adjusted R squared, we'd be looking for the largest adjusted R squared, 0.325, looks like the winner so far, 0.328, uh, so that looks like the winner, 0 0.3285, 0 0.327, 32, okay, okay. So I think that the model that has the highest adjusted R squared is this first model of size 6. Uh, and it has this CP value and this RSS value. So I think there were some questions here. So which model is best based on uh, choosing based on R squared, uh, the first model of size six. And then let's think um, about which model is best choosing based on CP. So we want the smallest CP. Let's see, we've got six. 3.9, 3.89, looks like uh, the first model of size 5 is the best based on CP. So the first model of size 5. Uh, it asks me what variables are in the best model of size 4. So let's look at the two models of size 4, and we'd have to pick which one was best. It looks like uh, based on adjusted R squared and CP, it would be this first one of size four. So we'd have to think about what variables are included. Uh, let's see if I can give myself enough room. So it looks like high school GPA, SAT verbal, humanities credits, and white. So high school GPA, SAT verbal, humanities credits, and white. So, so this uh, reg subsets command will give me that kind of information. But then if I actually want to know the coefficients from that model of size 4, I have to run it myself. So I would do m1 gets lm, we're trying to predict GPA based on hs GPA plus satv plus hu plus white data is equal to first year GPA. And I could look at the summary of that model. So there's my summary. And then if I wanted to know the AIC value, I could do AIC on that model object and it would tell me the AIC is 207.387. So that's uh, best subsets. Backward elimination, that's the one where you start with the whole model and then you iteratively remove things until you get to um, a model that has everything that is significant. Um, so I'm going to do backward selection. Again, I use the reg subsets command, GPA tilde dot for all the other variables, data equals, and best. I'm just going to show the, the one best model of each size. And then um, the, the maximum model size that I want is size 6. And I'm going to use the backward elimination method. So if I control enter here, nothing happens. I can look at the summary of the backward selection to sort of see what happens over time. So it starts with the best model of size 6, uh, which had high school GPA, SAT verbal, male, HU, SS, and white. And then it drops the worst one, which looks like it was male. And then the next one, it drops SS, etc. So I can see the stars um, based on which variables are in the model. And then again, I could do this with the summary of backward and make a data frame with maybe CP, for example. So uh, which model is best based on CP? We want the smallest CP, so it's the model of size 5, it looks like. 
3.89. Um, and then if we wanted to, we would fit that model with five predictors, LM, GPA, by and what's in there, HS, GPA, plus SATV, plus HU, plus SS, plus white, and then data is first year GPA. And we could look at the summary of M2. Okay, so the question was, are all the coefficients significant? No, SS is not significant. Um, and then it asks, are the assumptions met? So we would need to plot M2, which equal one, and look at that plot. Let's try that again. Eh, linearity looks pretty good to me. Maybe there's some slight fanning here. Um, let's look at the plot M2, which equal two. Yeah, I think the, um, the conditions look okay. Conditions look okay. And then what is the AIC value? AIC of M2, it's 207.3115. All right, forward selection, that's the other one where you start with the empty model and then you add terms that have statistically significant effects. Um, again, I'm just gonna show the one best model of each size. I'm going to go to a maximum size of six. I'm going to use the forward method. And again, I could look at this output matrix. Let's look at this. All right. So which model is the best? Uh, it looks like the model of size five again. And uh, is it the same variables? Looks like the same variables we found using backward elimination. So that's HSG, GPA, SATV, HU, SS, and white. And that's not always going to be the case that two algorithms would come to the same model. All right, and then we've got stepwise regression. That's the one that kind of combines both uh, forward selection and backward elimination. Um, this is called seek rep, S-E-Q-R-E-P, in the reg subsets command. Again, I'm gonna just do one best model of each size, go to a max size of six, run that. Um, and then we could look at the model of size four. Let's see, what is the model with four predictors chosen by this method? Uh, we'll call this M3. That's gonna be LM, GPA by HS, GPA, HU, and white. HS, GPA, HU plus white. Data is first year GPA. And we could look at the summary of that model. Okay. And then we could find the AIC value, AIC of M3. There we go. Um, so these methods are going to come up with different models. Uh, they might be very different. I feel like on this data set they weren't that different, but sometimes it makes a huge difference which method you use. Um, and uh, you have to pick as the analyst which model you think is best based on your contextual knowledge and your understanding of the algorithms. So there's this question, you know, which model do you think is best? I don't think there's a correct answer here. I think you could pick any of them. Um, let's just remind ourselves what the models were that we were thinking about. So we had M1, we had M2, well, that has five variables, I think, and we had M3. So I don't like M2 because it has this not significant variable in there. Um, maybe I would prefer M1 or M2. Summary, M, or M3 rather, an M3. Um, and if I wanted to compare based on the AIC, uh, AIC M3, we want a smaller AIC, so maybe I would pick M1. Uh, but maybe I like um, this, this slightly smaller model. So I don't think there's a correct answer there.